In the next video in this series, we will be looking at adding a pseudo component and investigating property packages in greater detail. We will start by creating a new case and we will add standard components from the HISIS data bank. This pane tells you which components are in your system. This pane tells you which components are available. You can search for components by name. or by chemical formula. Sometimes components need to be added that are not in the database. That may occur because the component is not listed or because the component is not known exactly. In the petrochemical industry, you may be able to work with what we call hypothetical components. A hypothetical component is determined by lab analysis to be present, but no general information is known about its chemical structure other than maybe its boiling point or molecular weight. In this case, we will specify a hypothetical component as being one of many petrochemical compounds in the range of 500 to 900 degrees Celsius. We will say the interval boiling point will be 50 degrees C and we will generate the hypothetical component list. Here we can see that properties such as density, critical temperature and so on have been calculated for different hydrocarbons that have boiling points in that range. Based on lab analysis, we can find that this hypothetical might be present, so we'll add it. And now we have our hypothetical component added to the list. We next need to use or set up a fluid package. The purpose of the fluid package is to allow us to calculate chemical and physical properties for the components in the component list. We can add the HISIS property packages and a grand choice is given to you. But selecting one of these is important that the selection is correct because otherwise you can predict wrongly the properties of the chemical components. So a method assistant is provided and the method assistant is a wizard that allows you to answer questions about your system. Those questions include what components are present whether they are inorganic chemicals, hydrocarbons or special systems such as amines. You can also specify the process type, whether it be chemical, electrolytic, environmental, petrochemical. In this case, we will specify the component types to be a hydrocarbon system. And we do have a hydro hypo component that we created, so we will select yes. And the system will not operate at vacuum so we have been suggested to use one of these property methods. We can get further descriptions of the property packages from the help files and by browsing we can see exactly what information is presented. We can even see the formulas that are used to predict the properties. Once you have selected correctly a property package, 
You can then look at the properties that have been predicted for that property package. You can look at the parameters that we use to calculate properties such as vapor pressure. molecular weight, and so on. Now that you have set up your component list and your basis, you can move on into the simulation environment. However, before we do this, you would want to note that you can add multiple component lists, and this is very useful for systems where we have components that are very different. In this case, Peng Robinson would be very poor at predicting the physical properties of glycol. So we create a second component list for it. And as such, we add a property package that will be best suited to handling the glycol. In this case, the glycol package. You specify which component list the property package is associated with. Component list 2 for basis 2. Component list 1 for basis 1. In the next video, we will enter the flow sheeting environment and we will look at the different unit operations that can be found there.